afternoon, everyone. I am so excited to see everyone here today. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I know we did. Lots of time building memories with families. I know there's some family members here today, so welcome to everyone. Just a reminder that we're just here to worship, and that could mean different things for anybody. So if you feel like standing up and worshiping, raising your hands, or just sitting in quiet reflection, any way you choose to worship is fine with us. Just join with us, please. everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children.
God and loving people. That's, uh, that's who we are. And I hope that we uh, portray that. With you. Um, you know, it's not about what you wear. It's not about uh, what you look like. It's about, uh, it's about knowing God. And that's a, a very cool thing. And that's what's important to us. So a couple of quick uh, announcements and things. I just want you to know that if you're new here, um, we want you to feel at home. No matter what's going on, uh, we want you to feel at home. There's, there's lemonade and popcorn and, and soda pop in the back. If you need a refill, it's okay to just get up and go get it. You're not going to be looked at funny just for walking around or whatever. We want you to be comfortable here. Uh, we know that uh, it's okay to have questions and doubts and thoughts and struggles, and no one's here to judge you. So uh, we just want you to know that we're not perfect. You're not perfect. We all know that, and that's okay. So we just want you to be uh, welcome here. Um, loving God and loving people. Uh, if you want to know and love God better, we invite you to be part of the, the Journey family. We have small groups that uh, you can read about in your bulletins, and uh, you can learn a little bit more about what those are. That's part of the, the family that we talk about. Uh, we also have the meetups, and we do uh, lots of, of meetup things. Those are in the bulletin as well. Some of the ones that are coming up I just want to highlight are um, we have the bell ringing thing on uh, December 3rd and if you can help us with that we would love it. There's a sign up sheet in the back and we go out to Salvation Army and we take one door for the whole day just this this group here and, and we ring the bell. So if you can help us for half an hour or an hour or whatever uh, we would greatly appreciate that. It's at Walmart. What did I say? Oh, it's the Salvation Army bell ringing at Walmart. I said it all to you. Um, so we want to highlight that. We really encourage you to sign up for that. That's a, a pretty big deal. The other one that I want to uh, bring attention to is January 8th. We have a, and it's in your, your bulletins here, we have a annual planning and vision casting meeting, and there's lots of things coming up, and everyone is invited, and it, especially if you're a member of this church, would love to see you get plugged in and get involved, and that's one way to do that. Um, we have uh, one of the changes that are going to be happening at that meeting, or we're talking about happening, is uh, we have uh, old bylaws or the old church rules and the new church things, and that, that happens every once in a while. We make those changes, but we have to vote as a group to make those changes. So we posted those in the back. You can grab those and read the old ones and grab the new ones and read those just so you know what we're talking about when that comes. But we definitely want to, uh, to plug you into that. Um, yeah, I, and, then, uh, and then if you have any comments or questions or prayers, we encourage you to uh, take those and put them in the offering, uh, the basket you know, that we have in the back. We want to hear from you. That's important to us. We also want you to uh, know that there's several ways that you can get involved with loving others, which is the other part of us, loving God and loving others, and one of the ways that you can get involved with loving others is uh, plugging into uh, these different uh, community things that we're doing, or uh, the giving. Uh, we would love for you to participate in that way. If, if, that's, uh, if you feel God calling you to give to the journey, then we want you to do that, and we have a basket in the back for that. You can also do that online, so uh, check those out. And uh, with that, I believe we will worship some more. Oh, kids should go with Gina as she waves in the back. You forgot to release the children. <laughs> we were all thinking it. Uh, just one more little plug for the bell ringing as well. If anybody is interested in doing carols while bell ringing, I'm super excited about that. You guys can come talk to me afterwards and we can see what kind of interest we have in that and what time we want to do that. So.
that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love.
Thank you. You guys may be seated. We're going to do one more. And um, for those of you who know me, know that um, I love celebrations of any kind. I love celebrating people's birthdays or any holiday or any occasion. It's just an opportunity to give and share in joy and celebration. So um, naturally, Christmas is my favorite time of the year. I may be part elf. So I've been super excited already. I waited till Friday to start playing my Christmas music, but I just wanted to spread the joy that I feel not only this time of year, but throughout. So we are going to sing Joy to the World today. So I hope you guys enjoy. I think next time I come up here, I might have like a Sherpa come with me. I'll just carry all my junk with me. Might be a little bit easier. Plus, there's like a step, so it's a difference in altitude. Oh, my goodness. Wow, one of those, right? <laughs> Excellent. Well, welcome, everybody, to the journey. I know you've already heard that once, but uh, we are glad you're here. And we are glad that, uh, that, God, uh, that God is with us, right? And, and I woke up this morning, and... I actually, I, I got home late last night, and I got to drive through the fog. And uh, nothing makes you more thankful for sight than not being able to see, right? And uh, in fact, I missed my, my turn in for my, my driveway and stuff, and, and all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, I went too far, right? And, and then this morning when I wake up, there's just this beautiful, thick, caked-on frost. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know what happened, but the, my fence just went... Whoosh. It's like an inch thick on there, and I'm like, Ooh. right? So it's uh, uh, Liam saw it, my three-year-old, and was like, Daddy, what happened? I said it was fog, and it turns to frost. Isn't that cool? I don't like it. So, but get to experience new things, right? But uh, we, we at The Journey, one of the things that, that we want to do is we want to encounter people where they're at. And we do that through a variety of ways. And we believe that Jesus Christ did that as well in his ministry. And uh, we, we, in fact, on Thursday, and uh, unfortunately, I have, well, not unfortunately, but I have, fortunately, I have two of my families in, in town, my mom and dad, and, and my in-laws are in town, so we never get to participate very much in the holiday stuff here. But uh, we did have over 30 people at the Thanksgiving uh, meal here, so that was awesome. Fellowship with the family, um, absolutely awesome. 
And we have opportunities to serve the community and those people that we don't even know. Um, I always equate volunteering to like a, a drop in a still pool, right? And, and the small amount of time that I might give can create ripple effects, right? And those ripple effects, I will probably never know the, the entirety of those ripple effects. But uh, they're ministering to other people, right? And with the bell ringing on, on Saturday coming up here, um, that's an opportunity, right? A, a small opportunity to take an hour and, and, and sign your name up. And even if you don't have rhythm at all, which I know people are like, Perla, you, you play guitar and stuff. Musicians in the room that have played with me know I don't have very good rhythm. Okay, I'm not, there's no secret there. Okay, I've made songs up. <laughs> not trying to, right? But ring, ringing a bell and, and giving people a smile, that's huge, right? And, and that'll have lasting impacts. Well, the journey exists, and you guys know our mission statement, to love God and to love people. That's kind of our tagline, right? But the journey is here to love God and to love people boldly, humbly, and authentically. We love them boldly, both God and with people, fearfully from God, and understanding that, that we have one opportunity to do this. We love people without remorse, without regret. We're called to love God and to love people humbly, as Christ did through love, not through hate. And understanding that judgment doesn't belong to individuals and human beings, it belongs to God. We're called to love God and to love people authentically, serving and worshiping God, not just on Sundays, and meeting the needs of others where they're at right now. So it's my prayer that today and this week and this year coming that you'll be able to do that boldly, humbly, and authentically. Well, the title for today is called Unabridged. And I, I got to tell you the truth, I'm not much of a reader. And um, it's kind of weird because I have a master's degree in history. And it wasn't until I got in my master's degree that I was like, oh, I really don't like reading. <laughs> but at that point, I was pretty deep into it. And to tell you the truth, I didn't read much before college. When I was in high school, I think I read one book front to back. I snuck through. I was a glider. I, not a sugar glider, they're small, never mind. But I was a glider, and I was able to kind of soar right through school, didn't have to do too much work, and I only read one book, and that was Tuesdays with Maury. Some of you have read that book. Uh, I've seen the stage play version of it and everything. The book moves me to tears every time. That was the one book that I read front and back, all the way through. When I got into my master's program, I, I would drive to Vermilion, which is about four hours away from Aberdeen. And that's a long time in a car. And I, I'm kind of got a lot of energy. And to be in a car for that long, I got to burn it somehow. And one of the ways I did that was by listening and, and uh, listening to books on tape. And the series that I was a big fan of, that I was like, you know what, I've never read it, but I think I, I would like it, uh, was Lord, the Lord of the Rings series. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to get this on tape. Now, I don't remember exactly how long it is. That's a pretty long book to begin with, or a series of books. It's even longer when somebody else is reading it to you. <laughs> and that took a lot of trips to Vermilion and back, but I got through with it in one year. I have to tell you what, there is so much more in that book, in that unabridged version of that book, than what the film showed. There are characters that they ignored. Okay, there is plots that they watered down and, and totally forgot to mention in the film because they didn't have time. So for me, unabridged books have never been very appealing. But uh, the idea of unabridged got me thinking about my life. And throughout much of my life, it's been about comparing myself to others. When I was younger, and I, I love the fact that uh, we had, uh, by the way, last week, if you missed it, it's online and everything, but we had some congregation members that, uh, that shared, and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. And one of those uh, individuals spoke about uh, their past and kind of their desires and, and um, what they wanted to be, and there was no real God worked into that picture. Well, I had to think about my own past, and I had to think about what I wanted to be when I was younger. I wanted to be cool. That's pretty easy. 
right? Not like when they are in kindergarten and they ask you, what do you want to be when you want to be big? Or when, <laughs> when you are going to be big, right? And you say something like, a fireman. No, I said army man, I think is what I always wanted to be. That didn't happen. But when I wanted to be older, I wanted to be cool. I wanted to have friends. I wanted to, ha I wanted to uh, have girlfriends. I wanted to date. Then when I was in college, I wanted to be the best student I could be. I wanted to be better than anybody else. I wanted to be the best musician. I was in choir and other things in college. I wanted to be the best musician. Even today, I struggle with comparing myself because I want to be number one in my career. I want to outshine everyone else. I want to have the best relationship with my son that I can have. Now, here's the issue. Some of that comparison is healthy, right? And some of it is. But really what we have to do is we have to check our motives. So I have to think about it. Do I want to have friends, boys and girls, whatever, to spread the gospel of Christ? Do I want to be the best student so that I can have knowledge to further the kingdom of God here on earth? Do I want to pursue music because I yearn to worship God? Do I want to shine in my career because when I work, I don't work for men, I work to glorify God? Do I want a relationship between my son and I to be so strong that we'll have the opportunity to minister to other fathers and sons? I'd love to say that that's why I wanted to do all those things wasn't really the case. So comparison can be healthy, but oftentimes for me, they haven't been. Too often I'm looking at someone else's life and wanting theirs or wanting a part of it. But here's the thing. If we go back to this idea of being unabridged versus abridged, right? Shortened. The reality of my comparison is that I'm comparing an abridged life and my unabridged life. I want you to think about that. Remember, unabridged books are the ones that are cut down. Or aren't cut down, I'm sorry. That aren't cut down. There's everything listed. Every little detail that the author wanted to include. You see, I've experienced everything in my life. The good and the bad. Every small detail. And I can remember many of them. Some of them I've even tried to block. I've lived that. Every second of it. The joy, the hope, the dreams, the humor, the pain, the desperation, the insecurity. I know my life through an unabridged lens. Like somebody's just reading page after page off to me. I know it that well. But when I compare myself to someone else, I only see their abridged lives. Right? The ones that are cut down the ones that the editors attempted to get rid of all the fat so that you could have a story that people wanted to read. When I compare my life to others, I see their face value issues. Even if I spend hours, weeks, days, whatever, years with them, I only know part of their story. I see the good and the bad, but I don't see what they've experienced and I don't see what they felt when it happened, and I don't understand their thoughts now. I see an abridged, short version of those things. Sometimes when we look at life through this unabridged version of life, right, that we see every detail, sometimes I think we can kind of think of it in two different ways. One of which is like it's this never-ending cycle of repeat. And it might be bad stuff. It just continually happens. In some cases, you have no control over it. Other cases, you might have tried and tried and tried and tried and tried, but you can't free yourself from it. You might have another perspective. Instead of this cycle of, of sin, you might just find life boring. And that you wake up, you go to work, you, you know, have lunch break, you continue to go back to work, and then you get off, and then you, you go and eat supper, and then you watch TV, and then you go to sleep, and then the next morning you, and it's just repeat. Endless cycle of repeat on life. Well, sometimes our unabridged version can be, can be boring.
This is a story about a man named Harold Crick and his wristwatch. Harold Crick was a man of infinite numbers, endless calculations and remarkably few words. And his wristwatch said even less. Every weekday, for 12 years, Harold would brush each of his 32 teeth 76 times. 38 times back and forth, 38 times up and down. Every weekday, for 12 years, Harold would tie his tie in a single Windsor knot instead of the double, thereby saving up to 43 seconds. His wristwatch thought the single Windsor made his neck look fat, but said nothing. Every weekday for 12 years, Harold would run at a rate of nearly 57 steps per block for six blocks, barely catching the 817 Kronika bus. His wristwatch would delight in the feeling of the crisp wind rushing over its face. And every weekday for 12 years, Harold would review 7.134 tax files as a senior agent for the Internal Revenue Service. Harold, 89 times 1,417. 126,113. That adds up. Only taking a 45.7 minute lunch break and a 4.3 minute coffee break. Timed precisely by his wristwatch. I will take Jake. Oh, great. Yeah, we'll go to Mullins. Beyond that, Harold lived a life of solitude. He would walk home alone. He would eat alone. And at precisely 11.13 every night, Harold would go to bed alone, placing his wristwatch to rest on the nightstand beside him. Pretty exciting life, right? I don't know if you noticed on his lunch break, he was looking at calculators and addition machines. <laughs> That's the life, right? Oh, look at that one. <laughs> Amazing. Unabridged. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel that life is just like this cycle of repeating events that you're just continually going through? I mean, whether they're good events or bad events. I've been there, right? Uh, I really have. Whether it was the cycle of, of the same thing, or a cycle of sin that it just seemed would never end. This idea of wanting to break free. When I was in college, I wanted to, uh, well, it was weird. I wanted to fast forward my life, like over the next four years. Like after I graduated high school, I wanted to skip college. I wanted to get married, I wanted to have a house, and I wanted to have a family. Did not want to do all those other painful things in between that. Dating? Trying to figure that out, <laughs> right? Uh, trying to buy a house. I don't want to go through all that paperwork. I just want the house, right? Uh, the difficulties of when my wife and I were trying to have a child, right? That's, that's a difficult thing that you're going through. I wanted to skip all that. I wanted to skip trying to find a job because I hate interviews and having to sit there and have somebody pick you apart Right? And then if you don't get it, you don't have any self-worth afterwards. Like, oh my gosh, are you serious? You don't. I put everything I have out there and you didn't like it. Therefore, you don't like me. Right? I wanted to skip those things. So maybe you're like me. Maybe you want to fast forward through the tough stuff. I want you to think of it this way. I'm not a huge athletic fan or a sports fan. I like the Green Bay Packers. We don't need to talk about that right now. They're not having a wonderful year. But let me tell you this, I used to watch ESPN all the time, right, the, the sports channel. ESPN has their highlights reels. The only way that you can have a highlights reel is if you have low lights. Does that make sense? The only way we can have a highlights reel is if there's other mundane, boring stuff that's going on in life. 
or really bad things that happen in a game. That's the only way that you have a highlights reel. Nobody is going to go to a professional sports event, football, baseball, hockey. They're not going to go to anything like that or even watch a show or, or, or a game on TV and we pay millions of dollars for these people to play. Nobody's going to do that if every game is just... And, and it's all really good stuff. Nobody does that. You have to have really bad games in order to really appreciate the good games. What's important for me to understand about that is I had to go through college and all of that stuff that I struggled with, I had to experience that stuff to really appreciate them when I got it. Christ himself experienced this, this highlights and lowlights issue. Right from the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark, we read in Mark 1, it says, And he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. He had to go through the tough stuff. He had to. Immediately after that, Mark writes this, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of depth on this. Obviously, Jesus' difficulty of being tempted in the wilderness, that's one time being fulfilled, but you also have to understand the grand consequence of everything that's going on in the world at the time period. And what the Israelites had experienced all the way from the Old Testament, this is the good time. They've experienced the lowlights. This is a highlight. I have to remember that those moments when I felt out of control, that giving control to God was only a dream, and that those nights I would go to bed crying out to God to grant me a godly woman as a wife, and those days when I would get tired of the mundane and want to give up, it's only by seeing those moments that I can truly appreciate the highlights. Those moments when I felt out of control and giving control to God was only a dream, well, they helped me appreciate those times when I've been so close to God it's unimaginable to me. Those nights when I would go to bed crying out to God to grant me a godly woman as a wife helped me appreciate the wife and more so the family that God has supplied for me. Those days when I would get tired of the mundane and want to give up, they helped me to appreciate the highs and the lows. Seeing highs and lows is just part of this unabridged life. When we snap out of this idea of being boring or going through a cycle, we start to view our lives differently. If one had asked Harold, he would have said that this particular Wednesday was exactly like all the Wednesdays prior. And he began it the same way he... And he began it the same way he always did. Hello? He began it the same way he always did. When others' minds would... Hello? Is someone there? When others' minds would fantasize about their upcoming day or even try to grip onto the final moments of their dreams, Harold just counted brush strokes. All right, who just said Harold just counted brush strokes? And how do you know I'm counting brush strokes? Hello? It was remarkable how the simple, modest, it was remarkable how it was remarkable how the simple modest elements of Harold's life so often taken for granted would become the catalyst for an entirely new life Harold ran for the bus his stiff leather shoes making a terrible squeaking sound as they flexed against the asphalt
And though this was an extraordinary day, a day to be remembered for the rest of Harold's life, Harold just thought it was a Wednesday. I'm sorry, did you hear that? The voice, did you, did you hear it? Harold just thought it was a Wednesday? No, no, did you, did you hear it? Harold just thought it was a Wednesday. Who's Harold? I, I'm Harold. Harold, it's okay. It's Wednesday. No, no, I... Never mind. If we could only snap out of it, right? Start to see life with a little different perspective. Oftentimes, what ends up snapping us out is conflict. Conflict. It's a weird word to throw out because a lot of people have a different meaning of what conflict is. And a lot of people have kind of a notion already in their head of what, it, what conflict is. One of the interesting things about humans is that we desire conflict. I don't mean drama. That's different. Right? I work with high school students. I know what drama is. And I'm not trying to diminish the things that high school students go through because I went through them as well. But, right, sometimes there are students, much like adults sometimes, that create drama just for the sake of drama. Now, I want you to think of conflict as simply a struggle between two opposing forces. Right? Maybe it's you and your bills. You and a feeling of anger. Maybe it's you and a family member. Maybe it's your use of time. See, what's interesting about conflict is we love it so much that we pay hundreds of dollars. There are industries that are formed entirely around conflict. Every film that you watch, every television show, every play, every book that you read, all of that has some sort or some form of conflict in it. Now, conflict isn't always bad. Conflict pushes us to get better. Right? The conflict of, oh man, I got a deadline. I'm going to push and I'm going to meet that deadline. That's a conflict. It forces us to figure out new ways to do things. Right? Maybe it's a conflict of, oh, I, I, have to, you know, uh, I have to fix this thing at my house, but I don't have the right screwdriver. If I was in Devin's school, I might just use my hammer. Okay? That's why he typically tries to fix things. When faced with conflict, we prioritize things as well. Right? And I have all these things I want to do. That's a conflict between me and my time or whatever else. I have to prioritize. See, the book of life, the Bible, discusses this topic all over the place. And one of those places is in Galatians. Galatians 6, 9, it says, And let us now grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Right? This idea of, of, of being under stress, being under conflict, and continuing to push through. Right, of not giving up. Keep pushing the rock. Most of the time we think of conflict as negative, though. It's like, uh, it's like a lot of different things. In my mind, too much of it can ruin our lives. Too much of it can become sin. Right? If I'm wanting to provide for my family, that's awesome. But the minute that my wanting to provide for my family, I start to look at my neighbor's things and I start to want those things for my own, well, now... I'm committing a sin. Wanting to serve God through work is commendable, but pushing myself over others and not giving them credit where it's due, that's sin. See, facing conflict experienced through life, that's expected, that's normal. But when we create conflict because we're addicted to it, that's sin. To tell you the truth, here's kind of the other thought about conflict. It's conflict that sets us free. Conflict sets us free. It's conflict that wakes us out of its, our slumber. It's conflict that Harold wakes up and all of a sudden says, and looks at his toothbrush and says something to it, right? Hello? It's conflict. It's conflict that makes an unabridged life beautiful. At one time in my life, I was filled with so much pride, so much doubt, and so much anger I would do two things, one of two things in a situation that I became stressed. I would either get in this mood where I had to make a joke, just always had to make a joke, whether it was a funeral, 
or another pretty serious situation, if I was under a lot of stress and the conflict was hitting me, I would try to make a joke out of it. And oftentimes it wasn't respectful. And the other thing, because I was so filled with pride, doubt, and anger, I would just break down in tears. I would get so upset with the situation that I was in, I would start crying. Some of you that have known me for long enough have seen me do that in the past. What a funny life I live. When I was 16, I had friends that helped me wake up to that because I wasn't educated as to the conflict in my life. But once I became educated, I woke up. See, when I had these friends, they, what, instead of worrying about themselves, they invited me to church. Instead of not having enough time for me, they made time. Friends that listened instead of talked. Friends that wanted the best for me, not just a good time. And to tell you the truth, I thank God for those people. And I thank God that he provided them in my life at the time. I would not have noticed them I would not have paid them any attention had I not had the low times in life. Had I not experienced other forms of conflict, I wouldn't have been able to identify the strongest conflict in my life, that my heart was broken and I needed Jesus Christ. In Ephesians it says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. The word trespasses, if you're not familiar, is just simply sins, sins against God teaching a three-year-old the Lord's Prayer and using trespasses in it, by the way, is always tons of fun. (laughs) Makes me smile just thinking about it. This idea of sin taking hold in my life and causing a conflict that I didn't even know about at all. And then understanding that there's more to it than just me. See, when you look at your life, you see highlights and you see lowlights. When you look at my life, you see highlights and lowlights, but you only know what I've told you. You maybe only know an outside perspective of what you've seen of my life. And I only know what you've told me. See, God knows and understands our unabridged lives. Every single second of every single day. It is because of sin that my life is in constant conflict. Or at least it was. It's because of grace that my life has highlights. To live as Christ means to understand that we all have an unabridged life and to love others despite that unabridged life. Take that in for a second. That we all have an unabridged life and we continue to love people despite our unabridged lives. We put those things aside and we simply love one another. In John it says this, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Not working? Okay. If you've never seen uh, that film that we were watching segments from, I'll share with you. Gets to the point where he, uh, he can see his life as being pretty mundane. And in fact, it takes a girl in this case, you know, it's a Hollywood movie, to point out his mundane life. And he's an IRS tax agent, and she's kind of, well... An anarchist hippie. Okay, she doesn't like the government and she likes to live her own life. And they come to appreciate the differences in one another and they live through their unabridged lives. They love through it. What ends up happening is Harold wakes up late one day. He didn't know that his watch had been set backwards. He runs to the bus. He gets there uh, three minutes late, standing in line, and there's a young man with a bicycle. Harold would not have been in this situation if he had been living the mundane, boring life that he was living. But once he paid attention to the conflict in his life, 
he woke up. He snapped out of it. And he's standing there, and this little boy on a bike rolls out into the road, and the bus comes. And Harold jumps out, throws the boy out of the way, and he gets hit by the bus. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Unabridged. Think of that. What a gift he gave that young boy, that family. What a reason to live that he didn't even know existed beforehand. This weekend, this season, especially as we, so much is going on, we should be thankful for our unabridged lives. Our lives are unique and deep and rich, not just the highlights. Our lives are not just a series of never-ending cycles. It's conflict that God put in your life for a reason. Celebrate your life in Christ. It's a narrative, a story that in order to fully appreciate, we need to know the highs and the low. A narrative that recounts an important conflict, sin versus grace. And a narrative that God, the author himself, wrote. In 1 Corinthians, it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Of peace. I have to tell you, it's that peace that's the reason why I love my unabridged life. Would you guys please pray with me? Father God, thank you for your day. Thank you for these people. Thank you for the people online that are going to watch this, God. We just ask that that we might be able to live boldly, humbly, and authentically. God, that our unabridged lives would not get in the way. Help us to encounter you in the days to come. God, if uh, there's any of us here that don't know you, that this idea of an abridged life and them not seeing the conflict, if that interests them, if that, if that convicts them, God, then I just ask that, that you would speak to them. God, we pray for this town, for this state, for this nation. We pray for your church. In your name we pray. Amen. If you're one of those people that does not maybe understand what I've talked about or anything else or that, that piqued your interest, I would love to talk to you. So um, remember the sign up for bell ringing is out there. Uh, otherwise, have a great week. Toodles. <laughs>